Hi, I'm Tim Bound and I work here at Transtherm Cooling Industries and today I'd like to talk to you about adiabatic retrofit kits. But first I'd like to talk to you about trends in specifying cooling equipment, particularly in regard to the ambient dryable conditions that are used. Previously and for a long, long time, people only used the weather data that was available for that particular local environment or town, city, etc. More recently, people are taking into account things like potential for warm air recirculation if it's an enclosed site, any warm air extracts that might be local to the equipment, um, or the fact that it could be mounted on a concrete pad, all of which can add heat. And so whereas you might look at the weather data and say, well, it says I need to base it on 32 degrees, that local environment could easily be seeing 40 degrees. Some customers' hours build this in, others don't always. It very much depends on the site and how much heat is going to be added in. But what we have seen, particularly in 2022, with the record temperatures, is that we've had more and more inquiries for adiabatic retrofit kits for legacy equipment. So hopefully moving forward, this year has taught us that we need to be specifying with more safety for new equipment, but certainly these kits are available for legacy equipment. So let's take a look and see what we include in our equipment. In basic terms, we have our full package PLC-based control panel. We have our adiabatic wet box. So the control panel can integrate via Modbus or BACnet with the BMS or the piece of equipment that the evaporative kit's going on in order to minimize water consumption. And it'll also take care of things like regular purge timers, the UV um, disinfection, and so forth to take care of the health and safety matters as well. So it's fully packaged, everything's taken care of for you. It's all pre-programmed. The control panel controls the adiabatic wet box, which simply looks at, am I being told to spray by another part of the BMS or are my own controls taking care of that and telling me I need to spray? If so, mains water via a series of filters, solenoids, double check valves, UV sterilization, is passed to the adiabatic spray bars and the minimum amount of water is pulsed through the spray nozzles to achieve the cooling effect, just to make sure that the piece of equipment that maybe has a legacy design ambient air temperature is gonna be at the point where it can continue cooling and operate at its optimal performance. So if you have any requirements, please get in touch. I'm Tim Bound, thanks for watching.